Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering the names of Al Warith, Al Mubin, and Al Shafi, the names that have the meanings of inheritor, the evident, and the healer. So to begin with Al Warith, um, we may often think about, especially in our time, in our society and time today, what we're going to do when we're gone, when we pass away. Uh, what what will our inheritance be? Who's going to get our inheritance? What you know? What are we leaving behind? Uh, and sometimes really get preoccupied with uh, you know before we uh, move on into that next phase of our existence or to to pass away uh, and and leave this world. What 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 are the things that are tying us down? And how do we how do we uh, distribute that? And and what what are we go, what legacy are we leaving? You know how are we going to uh, make our mark on this world. And so we th sometimes get really concerned about these things. And so uh, it's it's really appropriate when we think about the name of Al-Warith, who is the inheritor. Uh, Allah tells us that uh, Allah is Al-Warith. Allah is the inheritor who will remain at the end of the day when all of us are gone, when all of creation uh, and the world and everything else is enveloped and is gone. Uh, and Allah is the one to whom, as al warith to whom all possessions return uh, after we pass. So understanding that when we are uh, in this world as creation, we're not just these self-sufficient beings that are here by our own accord and just on our own rules. We're actually inheritors. We're caretakers. We uh, have been given these gifts. We've been given possessions. And now these possessions return to the owner uh, and our status as the caretaker has moved on and will be evaluated on that. But we realized from this name that everything is a loss and that we are simply as stewards, as caretakers, and we're temporary possessors of these things, given these, uh, this, this amana, this trust that the process that uh, that the that Allah has given us, and it's it's upon us now that when we leave, that none of these things are ours, but we're returning it back to our Creator um, and our owner, and we are going back as well. And so, to be evaluated on that aspect, that how are we leaving back this world when we understand this is none of these things are ours? Uh, how have we lived our lives up to this point with that? So, when we know that Allah is the inheritor uh, of all these things, it and it changes how we perceive when we think about what is ours and uh, it's no longer an issue of ownership but it becomes an issue of trusteeship and responsibility so when we leave we, we're no longer concerned that oh this is mine this is mine this is mine and all these different things um, but we, we we recognize that these are all things that are of Allah's how can I part with them in a way that honors Allah most and is recognizing of that uh, that ownership and proprietorship that Allah has, whereas I was just a simple caretaker. How can I continue to, uh, how can I do what I can to be able to benefit um, from them in, in that aspect, knowing that they're not mine. So uh, we, we don't do with these possessions when we think when we think about that Allah is and we know that Allah is the inheritor of everything, the owner of everything. We don't do what would be what, what all that we want to do with our possessions. We don't abuse them um, as we please, but we see them as things that are entrusted to us. We don't just wastefully spend them. We don't just, you know, disregard them or not honor them. Uh, we, we, we actually are quite mindful of that. So the best thing that uh, a, uh, a believer or any, any Muslim or anybody can leave behind our, our good deeds at the end of the day, because those are things that don't expire. Those are things that don't uh, have any kind of measurement with respect to their, they, they rot or they wither or anything like that. But if you do your good deeds, they are part of your true inheritance that actually remains. Because uh, when we are raised back up, when we are brought before Allah, uh, in, in, in with, with respect to account and judgment, um, that this is this is uh, what what will be on our sides. Is these it won't be our wealth, it won't be our families or our properties or any of these things that will be with us at that time. Uh, it will be the deeds that we've done. It will be the small good things, even if they're as minuscule as an atom's weight. Uh, that that it, any good thing that you've done will come to bear fruit and will be. Uh, that uh, which will show up uh, for you when you need it most. So we want to focus on planting the seeds of good while we're in this life uh, so that we inherit them in the next life when we do need them. Uh, so, so looking at it in that aspect, the Quran lifts up that the righteous will inherit the earth and not the powerful or the materially wealthy, but those who stick to the characteristics of religion or so the, the characteristics of their religion and the tenets of it, uh, for them, Allah will provide. Uh, and looking at it in the sense that 
the inheritance of the earth is not just uh, to the to the people who we think, oh, these people own the earth or they run the earth. They're like these uh, super billionaires. They have all this stuff. And sometimes we think that these people are the ones who, at the end of the day, control the material aspects of it. But in fact, seeing that Allah has not, um, you know, uh, unknowing of that, Allah is not unmindful of that. Allah actually is very much aware that Allah is very much aware and very much involved and uh, understanding that, you know, how we are, how we treat whatever material wealth we've given, whatever control or power we've been given, it's solely from Allah. But at the end of the day, uh, in, in a sense of this inheritance, this inheritance of, of righteousness, of, uh, of the garden, of paradise, of that which we see as the spiritual inheritance of these other spaces comes to the people who are righteous, comes to the people whose inheritance is in their good deeds, their investments and what their resumes are and their portfolios are, are filled with their deeds and their good deeds uh, and, and, and their, their uh, genuineness and their authenticity uh, and not just from their material accumulations. So uh, when we live with this name, we want to think of what are we leaving behind? Uh, we want to uh, think about, is it, do we, are we preoccupied just with the material things that we're leaving behind? What are we leaving behind with respect to our legacy in terms of how we treated people, how we were with people uh, in our relationships, how we were with people at the mosque, how we were with people, how we were with God, all these different things. How did we take care of the world around us? So thinking about all these different things, what are we leaving behind? Remembering that Allah will cause uh, the righteous to inherit uh, the good, will we'll inherit that which is to come, um, and will inherit uh, as well. We want to think about what is our inheritance, that we are inheritors as well, that when we come into this faith, we inherit from the prophets, we inherit from the tradition, we inherit through knowledge. So what are we passing on that we have inherited as well? When we have this religion, do we pass it on as a form of inheritance to other people? Um, the children that are around us and the families that we have, the community around us, they are the inheritors of uh, what we give off. So our values, our uh, religion, our teachings, our all of these different things of just how we conduct with one another, our, our, our good uh, deeds, all of these things are things that they inherit as well, not just the material aspects. So we want to think about what all do we leave behind for them beyond just the material things that the world says are inheritance. Uh, the next name is Al-Mubin. And so this name is understood as the evident, the clear, and it comes from the root meaning of clear or manifest. And this name tells us two things. That first, that Allah is evident by his essence, similar to Al-Zahir, and Allah makes himself evident by revealing the names uh, of Allah and the attributes of Allah so that we may know Allah, so we may come closer to Allah. And so whatever misconceptions we might have uh, through this name, um, they all become clear. This name helps become a source of clarity. It's, it's the bifocals that help us see things a lot clearer if we don't understand certain situations or a certain uh, setting that is happening or uh, a, a dilemma that we have. Al-Mubin is the one to help clarify that and help us to process and understand. And so uh, the other aspect of this, that the first part, as we mentioned, the name tells us two things. The first part is that Allah is evident in his essence. The second is that Allah makes evident. So not only is Allah the clear, Allah is the one who makes clear. And so the root meanings uh, of this name also means to make something separate or distinguished. And so Al-Mubin is thus the one who makes everything clear. And uh, we see this in, 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 in the aspect of uh, the, the similar root word uh, has, has the der derivations of things like Bayina. Uh, so Surah Al-Bayina, the, the proof, the manifest, uh, the thing which is manifest, the evident, uh, the clear um, proof that is there. So thinking about this, this word, uh, Mubin has the same root word as something like that which is a proof, that which is clear. So seeing Allah not just as the one who's the source of clarity and uh, the one who is clear and, and without any question or distinction, but also the one who provides clarity, the one who gives uh, clarity in different situations, makes things clear. So we're called to ponder, to reflect over Allah's signs, those which are clear and manifest, as well as those which are uh, hidden and, and those which are not so clear. And we seek clarity through Al-Mubin to find and to connect to those. But we realize and we internalize Allah's Al-Mubin and we start to receive this clarity because when we see it, not just in the outward signs, but in the inward, we start to see Allah much more intimately involved in our lives than we had seen prior. So uh, Allah makes clear 
uh, our, our own lives and our existence, our trajectory through life, through various injunctions, through the commandments, through revelations, through the examples of the Prophet Sallallahu and so many prophets before, uh, through all these different ways that Allah shows us the way, um, even when we might not be certain about something or unsure, unclear, Al-Mubin is the one that helps make things clear and helps to, to subdue the doubt a little bit for that, that clarity. Um, and knowing that doubt has is, is an opening uh, is a space where we can even deepen our faith. It, it's a it's a space where we can become more fulfilled. But that al mubin helps to clarify that al mubin helps us to get those uh, the right lenses to be able to see, absorb, and experience our faith. So when we know Allah's al mubin, we uh, uh, we know that Allah enables us to ask Allah to show this wisdom to show us uh, all of this that, that that is around us in the lens of Allah. So when we live with this name, we want to reflect, we want to ask Allah and build that connection with Allah. And we have certainty that the clarity will come or is to come or it or has come already. And so thinking about how have certain things been made clearer for you in your life? Maybe it was a person that helped clarify something. Maybe it was a therapist or an imam or a chaplain, or it was just a, a friend or a family member, parent, child, whoever it may be, seeing them as operating under this umbrella of clarity, under this uh, this umbrella uh, umbrella of al-mubin, um, that they uh, that through them, Allah helped clarify some things. So it's not that one day the sky is going to maybe open up and say, hey, here's exactly the things you're having doubts about. It may happen, it may not. But looking at the mundane and seeing how Allah we talked about was al-baltin, is, is the one hidden in the subtleties, in the mundane of life. How can uh, Allah be al-baltin, but also al-mubin, that helps make clear while being in the subtleness of our lives. So thinking about that in the sense. And the last thing we have is ash-shafi. Ash-shafi is the healer, uh, the healer of physical diseases of the body, but also of the spiritual diseases of our hearts and our soul, like things like envy, doubt, arrogance, rancor, uh, hatred, all these things that, that, are, uh, that are just as harmful to the body as that which is on the externalities. So with respect to the healing of the body, uh, Shafi, as we mentioned, is the healer, uh, has created the means by which diseases and uh, you know different sicknesses and things that need healing are defeated or cured. And so uh, we see in our tradition, not just is healing something that is good or something that is from Allah, but healing and the seeking of treatment uh, is, is something that's that's essentially an injunction that when you are sick, that it is part of the command of a Shafi to seek that healing, to go out. Don't, don't just like let things consume you in a sense, make an effort. We've talked about this in different ways that when you put your trust in Allah, you also have to strive. So uh, when you are afflicted with the disease, if you're diagnosed with a very difficult disease, um, that uh, at the end of the day, you know, you pray to Allah for healing, but you still have to do your part. You still have to take your medication. You still have to do what the doctors say to try and get better. So uh, seeing the seeking of treatment as well as part of that healing. Uh, the Prophet we see in, our, in, in his time, set up uh, a makeshift hospital in his mosque during the Battle of the Trench uh, and ap appointed uh, Rufayda al-Aslamiyah uh, as uh, the, the sister, as the uh, kind of like the 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 chief kind of like hospital, you know, manager, like the, 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 the head nurse or whatever you may want to say, like the medic uh, of the time uh, as, as taking care of these people. And so, you know, it could have very easily been that, oh, hey, you know, if you get wounded with an arrow, just pray to Allah and everything will be all right. No, you tie your camel. Naturally, healing is a part of the process, even in the cause of Allah. So when people were wounded, they were brought to the hospital, they were taken care of and they were bandaged and they were, they were given the proper prayers, but they're also tangibly healed. So looking at that as, as both a part of our tradition uh, and not exclusive from it. Uh, Ashafi, as we mentioned, is the source of not just all healing, but also the cures. And knowing that uh, from Allah, all of this is what comes, uh, that, that the healing is something that comes from Allah as well as the cure. Um, and so uh, the seeking of the cure, the seeking of ailments, but also making use of prevention and prayer, all of these are complementary. They don't need to live in different uh, exclusive silos and spaces, but they're complementary when we understand that Allah is Shafi, not just the one who will literally relief, uh, uh, relieve us from any disease and just provide healing, but being able to uh, holistically be able to heal us in our spiritual, physical, and uh, emotional ailments that we may have. So our illnesses from a traditional standpoint, our illnesses, whether they're self-inflicted or uh, not, if they're just their natural occurrences, they provide us with opportunities. 
um, opportunities that we realize our need for Allah, that we need for connection, and they remind us of our weakness. Um, from an Islamic standpoint, illness is not a closed door from Allah, that it shuts you off from Allah, but it's an opening. Uh, realizing that a Shafi is a true healer means knowing that the cure is from a Shafi and from Allah. Uh, and so Allah is not just the healer of the, the physical, but as we mentioned, the healer of the spiritual, of the hearts and the diseases of the hearts uh, and the spirit, such as arrogance, envy. Uh, and so the things that, uh, that, that come about that don't necessarily have a, uh, a medicinal cure or whatnot, or the things that we need to live with, because we, we see uh, in, in, in other diseases, the process has lifted up that in any, il uh, any illness that approaches a believer, any sickness that approaches a believer, there is a, uh, a, a healing in a sense of the spirit, that there is a cure um, of sins, there's an expiation of sin that comes along with that. So when you are suffering through something, the process has lifted up that in, in other ways that that is not just you know destroying you in one way, uh, you're, you're being built up in other ways. Uh, but when it comes to diseases of the heart, these diseases that that are arrogance, envy, and whatnot, they can't just sit there like any other disease that might bring a spiritual benefit to us. They need to be uprooted, weeded out, and removed. And so looking at when we when we ask a shafi, when we ask for a shafi, when we pray for a shafi, we don't just pray for healing that will make our knees feel better or make us uh, our minds more attentive or our hearts you know, more balanced in anything. We pray for holistic healing that our hearts are also cleansed, our spirits are cleansed of the negativity uh, that keep us away from Allah. So when we live with this name, we seek cure for our illnesses, both spiritual and physical. And we pray to Allah for our healing holistically, as well as seeing how Allah's own revelation, how Allah's examples uh, lifted up through the prophets, through the uh, mercies lifted up by the Prophet ﷺ, all of these are healings as well, if we only know. Um, uh, Qadi Iyad, uh, a very famous um, you know, scholar of Islam, uh, wrote a biography of the Prophet ﷺ called Shifa. Um, so as the healing. So see how Islam, how the tradition of Islam, how the revelation of Islam, and how the prophet of Islam can be a healing for you, not just in your spiritual uh, illnesses, not just in your spiritual diseases, but in the physical as well, uh, because it's a holistic example. So we ask Allah to be a healer of us, to make things clear for us, to make uh, to, to allow us to inherit the, that which we plant in this world that is of a good deed uh, of, of righteousness uh, and to be able to see those fruits bear um, and to also make us people who are inheritors, inheritors of paradise, to make us people who see and understand things clearly and to make us healers of humanity. Inshallah, I mean, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.